And welcome to Living Beyond Limits. I'm Reverend Jennifer Spear. We are a part of Centers for Spiritual Living. Welcome to our service. And those of you who are joining us online, welcome to our service also. And so let's begin this service today by reading our mission statement that's on the front of your bulletin. We are a sanctuary where people can discover and reveal the presence of God within their own being and experience their oneness with all life. Through this realization of this inner presence of love and peace, we give way to the evolutionary impulse of the divine and become a beneficial presence in the world. So really, living beyond limits the way that I see it is a doorway. It is a doorway to experience spirit, to experience that infinite one that is everywhere present, in and through and around and as everything. But as we give ourselves the opportunity to be reminded here, through the words that are spoken and through the sermon and the songs that are sung, We get to have a sense of that presence, not just around us, not just filling our lives, but that presence within us also. And we come to feel and sense and understand and know that that presence within us is a presence of peace. The peace that is not reliant on this world, that that presence within us is love a love that isn't reliant on people loving us back, we can still love regardless of what's happening. It is the truth of our own wholeness and our own authentic power. Because what happens is as we come to discover that that is always within us, always right where we are, that then when we are out in the world and the world is not reflecting those things back to us, we are in a place of our own personal power to be peaceful to be loving, to own our own power. And as we do that, we act as a beneficial presence to all of those around us and to ourselves in our own lives. And so I thank each and every one of you for saying yes to the call of your own spirit, to be walking this path in a way that is unique to you and to being a beneficial presence in this world. I thank you for that. Have you ever noticed that when you go on vacation, you feel so much more peaceful and relaxed? And not just are you peace, more peaceful and relaxed, but you actually enjoy yourself more while you're on vacation. You notice things that there are that are around you that are to be appreciated. You notice things to appreciate. You notice things that are beautiful, whether it's architecture or clothing or things in nature, you actually notice those things more than when you're living your daily life all the time. It seems like when you're on vacation, everything is just lighter and more fun. Do you ever notice those things? Is that your experience? You know, and the truth is, you really don't even have to go far to experience that. I have gone and stayed at a hotel in Long Beach and had that same kind of experience. I feel lighter and freer and things feel more fun and I notice things that there are to appreciate to a different degree. Things that I've actually seen that have always been there, but all of a sudden I like see them differently and appreciate them more. You know, I think that all of us, we would love to live our lives with that kind of an attitude in that kind of freedom and appreciation of beauty and that kind of peace. We'd love to live our lives where we recognize the good that is always present that sometimes we overlook. We'd love to live that way on a daily basis. We'd like to be in appreciation and to be in that attitude of openness. We'd like to have that sense of freedom that we have from being on vacation. We'd like that all the time. So why is it that being on vacation makes things so different? You know, I think that when we leave our homes and when we go away, we leave behind all of those things that weigh us down. We let them go and we leave them at home. We let go and leave at home our responsibilities and our concerns 
and the things that weigh us down in our lives, the things that feel overwhelming, whether it's in the world or in our own lives, we leave all that behind. The truth is, though, if you want to experience that kind of joy and that kind of freedom and that sense of well-being, you really don't have to go on vacation to experience that. But what you do need to do is to unplug. Because really, when we go on vacation, that's what we're doing is we are unplugging from all those responsibilities and our cares and our concerns and our worries and all of that kind of stuff that feels overwhelming. So what we really need is we need to be able to unplug and we need to be able to shift our perspective and we need to be able to see the world through fresh eyes. And so there's a story that says, once upon a time, a psychology professor walked around a stage while teaching stress management principles to an auditorium filled with students. As she raised a glass of water, everyone expected that they'd be asked the typical glass half empty or a half full question. <clears throat> Instead, with a smile on her face, the professor asked, how heavy is this glass of water I'm holding? The students began shouting things out, four ounces, eight ounces, a pound. And the, the professor then replied, the absolute weight of the glass isn't what matters while I'm holding it. It's the amount of time that I'm holding it that makes the impact. If I hold it for a minute or two, it's fairly light. If I hold it for an hour straight, its weight might make my arm ache a little. But if I hold it for a day straight, my arm will cramp up and feel completely numb and paralyzed, forcing me to drop the glass of water to the floor. It would, of course, leave me feeling miserable and completely consumed by that constant pain while I'm holding that glass. The weight of the glass in all of these cases remains the same, but the longer I hold it, the heavier it feels to me. As the class shook their heads in agreement, she continued, your stresses and worries in life are much like this glass of water. Think about them for a while and nothing happens. Think about them for a bit longer and you'll begin to ache a little. Think about them all day long and you will feel completely numb and paralyzed, incapable of doing anything else until you drop them. So the problem really is that we don't unplug from the world, that we don't unplug from our lives and our responsibilities and our thinking and our problems. And because we don't unplug, we don't get that shift in perspective, the perspective about the problems in our lives or about the problems in the world. And because we don't ever get a shift in perspective, those things begin to take on gigantic proportions in our thinking. Ernest Holmes told us, the wick of your individual life runs deep into the oil of pure being. No matter what confusion appears at the surface of your life, there is always a place of calm at the center of your being. No matter how turbulent the waves may be on the ocean of your experience, beneath there is a changeless peace. So if we unplug from the world and we allow ourselves to sink into that place of changeless peace, the eternal within us if we do that on a regular basis, then we find that place of respite. Then we find that peace that passes understanding. If we sink into that deep place within us, we discover and almost hear those words that all is well. That all is well now when we are in that consciousness. 
so many times I have had the experience where I'm on, it seems like mostly it's on the freeway where people are driving aggressively and cutting other people off or people are being selfish and self-focused and rude, whatever it is, self-centered. And I actually say out loud, can you imagine if you lived your life thinking this was the whole picture? That if you lived your life from that perspective, that this is all there is, what we see with our physical eyes, it would be so hard, I think, to live from that perspective, that what we see in this material world is the only thing that's happening. If we thought that that was the whole entire picture. If you lived from that perspective, how could you not be angry? When we view life only from that limited human perspective, our ego self, the problems of the world and the problems of our lives become so pronounced. That's all we see when we're looking through those eyes. From that perspective, we think that the appearances that we see around us are the ultimate truth. We think that's all there is. And in turn, that feels overwhelming and that feels overbearing. Pete Davis, in his book Dedicated, said, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote that we must choose between being an anvil or being a hammer. We'll either mold the world or we'll be molded by it. If you never go deep, you will always be the anvil. And the surest path to being the hammer is depth. When we glide on the surface of everything, we're susceptible to drifting in the world. And we aren't substantial enough to stop the world from pushing us around. But when we start to go deep, we gain mastery. We stop chasing shiny things and we become the shiny things ourselves. And so the title of my talk today is Vista Ahead. And I'm talking about that when we live from a spiritual perspective, when we live from a higher perspective, when we recognize and know that spirit is present right where we are, when we know that there is a bigger picture to life than what we're actually seeing in that moment, when we recognize and know that the nature of life is eternal and that we are eternal, then we have that sense that all is well. All is well with our souls and all is well with the soul of every person in this world. That shifts our perspective. That shifts how we experience the world. That shifts how we see things. And then from that awareness, we gain an equilibrium. From that awareness, we're not so knocked off center when the world is being crazy all around us. Because without that perspective, that's exactly what happens. I don't know about you, but that's what happens for me. I get knocked off balance. So to gain perspective, that perspective, to shift our perspective, we have to go deep. And so we go deep through meditation and through spiritual practice. It's kind of like depositing money in the bank. You deposit it through your spiritual practice and your meditation so that then when there's a crisis and you need to make a withdrawal, the money is actually already in the bank. So our spiritual practice is like making deposits in our spiritual bank account. And so I would love to invite you to join me in a meditation right now where we can go deeper than what our human minds are perceiving. And so I invite you to just kind of settle in and to turn to that place within you of stillness. That place of silence. In this stillness and in this silence, we touch the presence of God, Spirit, that infinite one, 
the one and only. It is here in this place of non-movement where we can perceive and experience the truth of God. Here we experience the vastness, the limitlessness of God and our oneness with it. So we move into this energy of oneness, of unity, experiencing God as the reality of who and what we are. In this silence, Spirit reveals to us the truth that it is omnipresent. Right here. In all, through all, as all. We live and move and have our beingness in God. The kingdom of heaven resides within. For God, in all its infinite potential, lives within us. Within this place of timelessness, no time, all space. The infinite unformed substance and potential of God here. Here lies the power of the universe. And in our oneness, that within us, the eternal within us, knows the truth that there is no separation. That all that God is pours itself through us like a fountain, flowing, unhindered, calling us home, home to the truth of our own soul, home to the truth of the one. There are no limitations or obstructions. In God, we are powerful beyond measure. For what is true of God is true of us. For there is only one. The infinite potential of God is forever pouring forth. Fresh and new. In this now moment lies the fullness of the presence of God, always, forever, beside you, behind you, above you, within you. And so we just rest here for a moment.
And so I invite you to begin to bring your awareness back to your body, to the chair that you are sitting in, feeling your feet on the floor and kind of wiggle your body and your fingers and your toes and allow yourself to come back to this room. And so meditation and spiritual practice allows us to unplug, to unplug from our lives. It allows us to pause, to find refreshment. It allows us to discover a greater reality than the one that we see when we're just looking at this world. Going deep in meditation allows us to ascertain a higher or a deeper truth. It allows us to recognize that the limitless is ever present, always right where we are, eternally present. It allows us to see something different than, greater than, beyond our human limited perspective. Joel Goldsmith says, there is no place where I can be that God is not present where I am. As long as I am where God is. As long as I abide in God and God abides in me consciously, how can I step outside of God's grace? The presence of the infinite is always right here, but we only recognize it when we turn to that presence. When we take our attention and place it there, then our experience and our perception expands. And so while doing spiritual practice and while meditating allows us to see that there is a bigger picture or allows us to understand, get, grok, that there is a bigger picture, that it allows us to comprehend a greater reality than what we see in our lives, we are still called to do what needs to be done in the world. We are still called to stand up for what, be, what we believe is right and what we believe is important. We still voice our opinion. We still write letters. We still vote. We still take care of the environment and this planet. We still volunteer. It's like the great dichotomy of spirituality. We go into deep meditation and we get this sense that truly all is well right now. We really get that. And then we are still called to, from our human experience, go out and make the world right so that it matches up with the peace and the harmony and the good and the love, the value, the beauty that is of spirit. So we do what needs to be done in consciousness and in this material world about creating heaven on earth in this world here and now. But when we do that spiritual practice, we are then able to do that from a place of groundedness. We're able to do it from a place of our own wholeness and our own power. We're able to do it from love. We're able to do it from our spirit. And so my invitation this week to you is to disconnect, unplug from this world and from your life and from your worries and your concerns on a daily basis. Take some time to unplug from that. And if you can't do it every single day, do it regularly because that changes how you view the world when you're out living your life. Lean into that deep oil of pure being that is your own core essence. 
that is the spirit within you so that in turn you can find your own peace so that you can come from an awareness of a higher truth so that you can really see that you are immersed in good always and as a result of going deep and spending time in that place you will not be knocked off balance so much by this world you will carry a sense of well-being with you in everything that you do and everywhere you go and so blessings to each and every single one of you as you discover uncover reveal remember the presence of the infinite one that is always all around you and always right where you are and always within you blessings to all of you and so I invite you to join me in an affirmative prayer and so how good it is to be in recognition of this presence of spirit to be in recognition that we are actually living in this light that is the light of God and that that light actually fills every nook and every cranny it fills every single situation every single person every single moment every single place we could go whether it's the top of the mountain with a beautiful view or the heat of the desert or in a place of conflict or disappointment or discouragement or disharmony that the presence of spirit nonetheless is right there seeking and yearning to pour itself forth in its fullness and it does that by means of us and so today as we turn to that one it turns to us as we turn to that one and we are open and we say yes to that in comes flooding a good beyond measure in comes flooding not just from the outside but from that deep well within us comes flowing forth peace comes flowing forth compassion and kindness and a willingness to understand a willingness to hold people in kindness and in the light seeing that they have that light within them even if they can't see it themselves but we can see that light and so everywhere we look we witness the light of the divine which is an intelligence and a creativity and a love unconditional that is present and so today we walk our lives live our lives as conduits for this presence for I know that it is always within us for it is the very essence of our own divine nature it is what we have come from it is what we have come as and it is what we have come here to do to shine that light into our own experiences into our own lives into our own relationships into our own places of work to shine that light and witness that light all around us and so today we walk in a blessing and we walk as a blessing and so I speak this word not just about us in this room but about every single person on this planet that that same presence of love and peace and goodness of creativity and power and intelligence is present where every single person is living itself out within their hearts through their minds through their hands through their lives and that today as we recognize that presence because there is only one and we are all a part of it that one is stirred in every body everywhere for we are creating an opening in consciousness in the one collective consciousness 
And so we see that light everywhere. We celebrate it in every person, in every politician, in every decision maker, in every world leader. God right there in its fullness. And so today, we rest in that consciousness. And we move out from here today in that consciousness. And so in gratitude for this truth, I release this prayer into the creative womb of the universe, knowing that it is swirling around and unfolding itself and empowered and unfolding everywhere. And in that, I am so grateful. And I invite you to join me in saying, and so it is. So grateful, and I am so blessed. And it's so wonderful being here with you. I'm so glad you all are here. So I have a couple of invitations for you. One is to mark your calendars the last Sunday of this month. We are doing a community outreach project. So what we have lined up thus far is we are going to do a project for Sukasa, which is a shelter for battered women. There is a list inside your bulletin of products that they're asking for. So I'm going to ask any of you who want to purchase things to purchase them. Then on the last day of the month, we're going to actually have a get together at Chris and Peggy's house. Tables will be set up and we will make bags, put bags together of those gifts. We're going to have cards. Mother's Day is two weeks later, so it's a Mother's Day project. Um, two weeks later, we'll do cards for the women at Sukasa and cards for women that are in a, what do you call it? Retirement home. What is it called? A nursing home. Yeah. For women, that, for mothers that are in a nursing home. I think the plan is also, there may be, not be people that want to do that, so I think we're going to put together a second option that day that's going to be a beach or a park cleanup. If you don't want to do cards and if you don't want to help put together those gift bags, then you can go do the beach or park cleanup. We're going to organize that. We'll find out a place. So next week, I will have a sign-up sheet because we'd like to know who's going to participate, who wants to play with us. Um, so the idea is, if you don't already know, on fifth Sundays this year, there's four of them, we're going to do something different, which our intention is to do a community project outreach, to do something together just to kind of mix up the energy, to get to do something fun, to be of service, to be a beneficial presence in this world, and to do it in a different way than just doing our regular Sunday service. <coughs> so I hope that you will all participate in that and join us and have fun doing it. The other ones are just um, ha social media. We have a bunch of social media going on. We are on Meetup, on Instagram, and on YouTube. And it seems like there's something else too. TikTok. <laughs> so if you would like to follow us on any of those to do that, to like us on Facebook, to share the talks, get posted every week on Facebook, to check in on Meetup and say that you're coming, um, just to do that. Our Sunday talks come out on Monday. They get, land in your inbox. We invite you to share those or to share them from Facebook. And that we have prayer after service. If you would like prayer, the practitioners are happy to sit down and pray with you. We have prayer shawls that you can take with you. We have a ministry of prayer box. If you want to put a prayer request in the box, we will support you during the week. I believe that's it. And so I invite you to repeat after me. Good fills my life now. Good fills my life now. I step into it. I step into it. I own it. I own it. I celebrate it. I celebrate it. And so it is. And so it is.